All right, so we're going to create a simple game using the processing software. Um, so what we're going to do first is set up some basic variables and functions that can be used for any game, um, which includes three scenes. So we have scene one, which is a graphical user interface saying, you know, my game, start game. Second scene is actually the gameplay, and the third scene is a you lose page. So first thing that we do in any code is to set up our variables. I'm just going to type variables there. And I'm just going to remind myself here that zero is my GUI, one is my gameplay, and two here is going to be my game over screen for future reference. Now I'm just going to use set up my first variable. So integer scene, and when the game first starts up, is set to zero because we want it to display our graphical user interface. Okay, so that's the first variable that we have so far. Now we're going to create our set up block of code. Oops, second block. So my first function is going to be um, my setup function. So you start with the keyword void setup. In between these two curly brackets is where I put um, the instructions that I want to happen when the game first initializes. So that is to create a size for my canvas or application of 500 by 500 pixels. If I press play now, you can see that I have a canvas of the right size. If I were to change this to 600 by 600, the canvas would get slightly larger. I'm going to leave it at 500 by 500 for now. And we're going to move on to the next part of our um, setup, which is our draw block. Okay, so by putting these two forward brackets in front of text, it means that I um, it means that they're commented out. So the script is actually not reading any of this in grey. These are purely notes for us as the developer to be able to look at. So they're just there for later, so I know what is actually going on. So our section, a second function is the draw function. So this is going to run once a second, and it's what allows our game to be interactive or allows um, change to happen on the screen. The void setup function only runs once. It sets up our screen, and then it does nothing else. So we start with our keyword void, which is for our function. OK, so inside this draw function, we're going to add some logic. So we do that with an if statement. So we're going to say if. Scene is equal to zero, then run a function that's called GUI. Else if scene is equal to one, run a function. run a function called game play and colon close that bracket else if scene is equal to two run a function called game over okay so double checking all of our brackets here we have if scene is equal to zero, play GUI function. Else if scene is equal to one, play gameplay. Else if scene is equal to two, play game over. And that closes our function. Now at the moment we don't have a function called gameplay, GUI, or game over. Um, so what we need to actually do here underneath is to create those functions. So I'm just going to create a new comment here and call it other. other functions and underneath here I'm going to use my keyword void GUI 
and any information I put between these curly brackets is what will happen when I call the GUI function up here. We're also going to create a function for our gameplay. And finally, we'll create a function for game over. Okay, so this is the basis of our game at the moment. So this is going to run our basic game. So if scene is equal to zero, play GUI. If scene is equal to one, play gameplay. And if scene is equal to two, play the game over scene. So here in our functions, we can now add some content that we want to happen on this GUI screen. So what I'm going to do here is add a background for my GUI. So I use the key term background. And here it's going to expect three different parameters, so three different numbers. And those three numbers build a color. So processing gives us this great option at the top, this toolbar, the color selector. And I can choose any color I like now from my color selector to be the background color of my game. Choose this green color and it will give me three values. So 171, 245 and 161. These are the three numbers that I put inside my background function. 171, 245, 161, comma, bracket and a semicolon. So now it's going to set the background of my GUI function to this particular green. If I press play now, you can see that that's happened. I also want to add some text to this screen. So I'm basically going to say under here that I want my text to be centered to the screen. I want my text color black and you can see here that all three values for RGB and um, black are just zero so I can actually just write here zero once I don't need to write that three times so I'm going to make it feel zero I'm going to set a text size of 70 and now I can finally write my text And I'm going to call it my first game, making sure that I put it inside inverted commas. Now I'm going to add a width and a height to this. So we go width divided by 2. This is positioning, I should say. Height divided by 2. So this is going to position that somewhere on the screen. And if I press play again now, we can see that I have my first game written across the center of the screen. Now, if I were to change the fill color here, to change the size here, we would see those and change the number here. Let's make it a bit smaller, we'll go 50. And you can see that it's adjusted the size. So we can have a play around with those depending on the length of your text. You may need a smaller or a larger um, text size. Underneath this, I'm just going to give my user some instructions. So I'm basically going to say click to start. I want this to be smaller than my heading. So I choose text size 15, text Let's just click to start. And again, I'm going to position that just in the center of the canvas. that. Okay, so we can see that that's put it again right in the center of the screen on the um, Y axis. So what I would like to do is move it away from my main title. I actually want it to be near the bottom of the screen. So the way that I can do that is to say to where I want the height to be. So the height rather than being splitting the canvas in half, I'm actually going to position the height at minus 30.
and that's going to put this right at the bottom of the screen. So again, I can have a play around with these values next to my parameters um, to move things around the screen and have a bit of a play with it, but this is where I want to be at this stage. So I have a simple game window um, and I have the set up here to be able to move between different scenes but at the moment none of my other scenes have anything on them and I have no way of moving from this scene to the next scene. So what I need to do is create an on mouse function or on mouse pressed function so when the user presses the button it jumps to this gameplay function and starts running that gameplay function. So in order to do that I need to create um, some input just up here I'm going to create a new little heading here called input and the function I'm going to use is a public function called mouse press. So basically this function will run when the user clicks their mouse. It's it's a it's always going to run when the user the user clicks the mouse. So now I just need to tell it what I want to happen when the mouse is pressed. That's spelled incorrectly. Mouse press. That looks better. So now I need to tell it what I want it to actually do when the mouse is pressed. So if the scene is equal to zero. I actually want it to run this gameplay function. If for some reason my gameplay, I've died and I'm on my game over scene, then I want it to actually go back to this GUI window. So I say if scene is equal to two, and let's play the GUI function. I'm probably typing today. Okay, so this little um, mouse press function now is going to create input for our user. So if scene is equal to one, go to our gameplay scene. If scene is equal to two, then come back to our GUI scene. So if I press play now, I have my GUI window. It says click to start. When I click, it appears that nothing happens. So at this stage, one, we don't have anything in our gameplay function, so there's nothing to display. But our scene variable is also still equal to zero, so it's automatically jumping to this GUI scene. So what we need to do is change this scene variable to one and put some content in our gameplay function. So the way that we can do that is we can say if Scene is equal to zero. Scene equals one, and run the run the gameplay function. And here in our gameplay function, I'm going to change the background to white. Or again, we could use our color picker and change it to any color we wanted to. And now, when I play it, I have my first game. Click to start. And when I click, it moves on to the next scene. 